Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from BitEmOut.com, BitEmOutLive.com, and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, September 10th, 2021. And uh, as always, we're going to go over what's been going on this week, uh, what's coming up at auctions, and a bit of news from here and there. See, what, see uh, sort of get up to date on things. Uh, it was kind of a quiet week on eBay last week, and we'll get to that in a bit. I'm not sure why. I think a lot of I don't I don't know what's going on there, but there, there a lot less listings than usual um, than what we would expect. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was we got a couple of emails in the last few weeks from people um, on the, using the Bitamount Live site. They're having trouble with their Firefox browsers, and it was due to an update that took place uh, apparently. And I had uh, our tech lady. Uh, working on it and uh, trying to figure out why people using Firefox couldn't couldn't open the pages like this. And uh, well, we went out and did some digging around and she did some digging and did some coding and checked and was able to fix it. So now when you come over, if you're using Firefox, the pages present normally. All right, and I apologize for the uh, little bit of a delay for those, those users, but uh, it was something that happened apparently uh, between updates of one kind or another and and uh, Firefox got the short end of the stick on it, I'm afraid. Uh, unfortunately, most of the web companies these days cater to Chrome. And um, when, they des when, 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 when sites are done and plugins are created and whatnot, everything is aimed at uh, uh, making sure Chrome works well and they don't always check um, if they're compatible with things like Firefox. And Firefox doesn't always check to see if they're compatible with all the different web platforms. It's a little bit on them, um, but at any rate, it got worked out, so uh, sorry about that. It, it happened. <laughs> All righty. Now, what's going on here? Oh, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was that Doyle um, is coming up on their Asia Week sale, and their items are all up now. If you haven't seen them yet, I urge you to go do it. Um, Rick Cervantes has done a great job over there. He runs the Asian department, and there's some very interesting things in there, and in all price ranges. It's, it's a... The, the Doyle is a terrific auction house if you've never done business with them. I, I, um, they're, they're, it's a smaller firm, than obviously, than Christie's or Sotheby's, but they have a nice reputation. They handle very good stuff. Uh, dealers love to go in there because you, there's, they, you have a shot. They, they tend to push away from heavy reserves. They tend to push away from crazy estimates. And uh, you can bid online, You can and, and they're, they're very communicative with you. They'll... Uh, um, if you ask them a question about something, they'll let you know. And uh, Richard runs a good department. You might know Richard. I mentioned him before. He he, uh, he had worked for Freeman's and he'd worked at Heritage, and he decided to come back to New York. And he's now the head of department at Doyle, and uh, he, he's been around for a while. He knows what he's doing. At any rate, there's some nice things in there. We're going to talk about a couple of them. Um, uh, these are just some of the items that are on there, just to get your attention. Paintings. There's some good calligraphy. There's a lot of porcelain. A lot of Famille Rose. There's some very good monochromes. There's some good Kang Shi pieces and so forth. All right, as you can see, there's lots of nice celadons, and the estimates you'll notice are, are reasonable: thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, that kind of thing. You don't have to take a second mortgage on your house. Uh, one of the things that we has that you might need a second mortgage for is this: uh, a very, very, very rare uh, vase. Uh, in Famille Rose depicting Europeans. This is Chinese. It has lost some of its height. It's been, you know, up here, it's been, it's been cut down at some point. But uh, an extremely rare example with a four-character Qin Lung mark, probably done at the Tang Ying workshops, judging by the quality of the work. Uh, uh, absolutely exceptional. There's a, a few of these examples around, and uh, it's got a big estimate on it. Even, even with the reduction of height uh, of uh, 100 to 300,000, comes from a collection. One of the things that Richard has been doing is that he's been including in a lot of the listings. You'll notice the estates or the collections that things come out of. Uh, that's important these days because because of the, the problem with, with some copies on the market. And um, whenever he can, he includes that. Uh, this comes from the estate of Sarah, uh, Sarah Belk Gambrell, and uh, it's estimated at 100 to 300 thousand dollars. It's sort of a wide estimate. We'll see what it brings because it has lost height and it does have this series of cracks over here. But the artwork, the painting on this is absolutely exceptional, absolutely beautifully painted. Really, really lovely colors, beautiful shading. 
Um, just absolutely the very best, absolutely superb. And, uh, you know, we're at full height and full full condition. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's an eight to $10 million piece of porcelain. Uh, so let's see what that does. It's, it, it's a great thing, it's a great thing. And uh, the other thing that he got was this, this really beautiful Yongshen Celadon uh, vase with three lug handles on it. This is a big vase. It's a shape and style and form that typically people think of being rather small, four, five, six inches uh, often in, in this shape. This thing is a foot tall. This, is, this thing doesn't read as big as it is when you look at it visually, if you're familiar with these shapes, because you think, oh, that's one of those little vases. This isn't, this is a 12 inch vase. It's a good size one. Uh, Mark and period, of course, and it, it just says property of an American collector. But it's a, 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 a beautiful thing, nice looking foot rim on it, spectacular quality. Um, all the way around here, all, all the way around. Absolutely beautifully finished on the bottom. The face of the vase is, uh, you know, the, the front of the vase, the glaze, the handles, the way they're done, all that is just, uh, just, just sumptuous, just really great. And uh, the estimate is uh, right up there, 80 to 120,000, but um, it's Young Chen, and Young Chen celadons of this quality uh, are, are quite rare. And uh, we'll see how that does. That, that we'll get back to it after it sells. And then there are other things that are, are, are more uh, affordable, like this, this very nice uh, blue and white uh, uh, Ming Dynasty, late Ming crack base, uh, nice looking bottom on there. There you go, it's got some old stickers on it. But that's what the bottom of one of these should look like, a little bit hacked up, a little bit dirty. Uh, but all naturally, you know, naturally done in a nice trimming all the way around and uh, b beautiful uh, cobalt. The decoration on this is really nice. The outlining is strong uh, and then very nicely shaded in. Good looking piece of porcelain. 1000 to $1,500, I think is the estimate. 1000 to $1,500. Uh, can't beat that. And also uh, this, if you like candies. Uh, if those of you have to, I had a lot of inquiries this week about candies for some reason. I don't know why. Um, Kendi's in different auctions. This is a nice one. It's got the, the swollen spout and these uh, very nice elongated acanthus leaves or uh, bok choy leaves going up it. And then this nice uh, lattice pattern on the top and beautifully done flowers all the way around. And it looks to be in quite nice condition. You know, of course, you always get a condition report just to be certain. Uh, it is estimated at $1,500 to $2,500, which means the the reserve at the most is at twelve or fourteen hundred, which makes it viable. You know, uh, this is the kind of sale you go to, and you just you just want to go in and just just leave bids, just leave bids all over the place. You're not going to get everything you want, but um, if you if you if you go in and sort of carpet bomb the sale with bids, uh, you you might surprise yourself. You might surprise yourself. All right, and then um, on to uh, other things. Uh, do you remember we talked about these paintings? These were in that sale up in Canada at uh, Wilkins Auction and Appraisal. This took place up in Ontario, and the paintings all sold. And the prices were kind of funny on them. The, the art, the, the paintings looked like they were all done by the same artist. They were part of a set, evidently. And this one was absolutely fascinating little painting. Uh, had a great look at interior, uh, uh, women um, uh, getting dressed for bed and fans and all this terrific uh, Ming furniture around the room, lots of details and so forth, and uh, beautifully framed, nice mat on it, sold for 1200 Canadian or $946 US. That was a great buy. And then the, the, uh, the next one, wait a minute, we're going to get back to them here. Hold on a second. Where are the other paintings? Here they are. Okay. There we go. This one sold, it was an exterior scene of a courtyard, very nice, same same, same artist. Um, and it even had a little, little bit, bit of a stain in the, in the sky, but it doesn't matter much. Uh, but very nicely done. And the exterior scene here brought 3,200 Canadian or $2,524 uh, US. And uh, this one brought $2,927. Uh, this was a this was an interior scene, a nice one also, with uh, 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 with figures and scrolls and whatnot. But I don't see that it was appreciably any different than the first one that sold for twelve hundred. As far as quality and interest goes, this one sold for twenty nine uh, ninety seven, and uh, this one sold for thirty three twelve, which was which is which was maybe a little bit more dramatic, but f by far less detailed. 
other than it had that very attractive turquoise balustrade across the top, which I, I sort of punctuates the, 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 the frames, helps frame the picture. Um, and there's a dog with a kid in the foreground. Maybe it's the dog that got everybody so excited. Uh, I don't know. But th this painting brought the most. So try to go figure uh, why, why things bring what they do. Here's an example where one by the artist, which was very, very nice, and uh, you'd have a hard time arguing with me that it was not as, it was not, uh, that this painting was any better than that one, sold for 3,300, and the other one sold for 1,200. And uh, perhaps somebody bought all of them, who knows? Maybe one person bought them all and he's sort of averaging it out. But I, I found that uh, combination, the, 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 the pricing to be very peculiar, very peculiar. But when you have pricing that's off with similar work by you know a 300% disparity, it's a little bit strange. Go figure. All right. The other thing I wanted to mention were the books. These were over at Andrew Jones's sale. These took place the other day. Um, they sold the day before yesterday. And that very nice set of books, Imperial Silks of the Qing Dynasty, I hope one of you bought it, sold for $140. This is a terrific set of books. Very, very good. Done by the Minneapolis Institute of Art. And it was a collection that was donated to them. They, they photographed the whole thing, and the book was published in 2000. And I think this was one of the one of the bargains of the week on references. Not everybody not everybody is interested in Chinese silks. That may be why it, it didn't go for as much as as it might have if it were of another category in a collection because it's a great set of books. But if one of you got it, good on you. You got a great buy. And the other book, set of books that sold that did well was this, the Audible um, Shrine and Top Cappy uh, Museum book that was written by um, Masugi. Uh, this is one of the, one of the uh, uh, sort of the Bibles. Uh, it's a three-volume set with tipped-in photographs. I, I've had this since it was first published. Um, I've used it many, 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 many times. Uh, and it's got some neat old photographs in it of uh, the interiors of the mosques in, in, in Turkey and, and Iran. And uh, it's really quite a, quite a fascinating uh, set, set to own. And uh, somebody picked that up, I think, reasonably, even though it was you know, three or four times the estimate, but for $450. And then lastly was uh, China for the, uh, for the West. Um, this was that, uh, the Ayers uh, volume, uh, estimated 100 to 150, sold for 450, which I think was also a, a, a pretty good buy. So I hope one of you, uh, or some of you out there, uh, were the people that got these. Because uh, these are worth putting into your library, and uh, you're going to enjoy them for a long time. A long time. All right, now, what else is going on? We've talked about the paintings. The, oh, the dishes up uh, down at Brunks. Uh, we had talked about these at some length uh, a couple of weeks ago because I thought they were so wonderful and the estimates were so reasonable. And this is what I was talking about was the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Bishop of Porto plate, for example, a very rare pattern. It was at a very modest estimate of eight to $1,200. That's how Brunx does it. They're, they're good. I like, I like the fact that they do that. Um, ended up selling for $7,500 plus the buyer's premium. But very rare pattern, really, really rare pattern, and uh, in, in, in absolutely beautiful condition. Condition matters as much as rarity, and, and uh, when you have something in, in this kind of condition, um, you know, virtually new condition, uh, it's, it, 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 it's going to get a lot of interest and excitement among the armorial collectors. And uh, the, this, the, rest of the, the rest of them did uh, very, very well. We're going to go through a few more prices, but these are some of the plates just to refresh your memory. Um, the, the Arms of Pitt, uh, for example, which is one of the, one of the, a very desirable pattern, ended up selling for $4,250 plus the premium. And then uh, they also sold this. This, I think, was a pretty good buy. It was a 14 and a half inch tall rose mandarin porcelain vase, part of a garniture set. It would, there would have been originally a couple of them, maybe a couple of, a couple of flasks alongside them, uh, but good size, 14 inches. Somebody picked it up for $1,500. Now, whether or not it had a restoration on it or not, I don't know, but it, it's, it, it's, that seems to be a price that something has that would bring if it was restored. Um, and if it wasn't restored, you, whoever got it got an, ex, an excellent buy. That's why condition reports are so important. And then, and then this, this sale, this sale just ended today, by the way. Uh, this is a, another really fine armorial plate, estimated at six to nine hundred, almost, uh, uh, you know, almost went four times its low estimate or, or two and a half times its high estimate. Did very, very well when you include the buyer's premium. 
and uh, the same one for this, the mermaid, the merman plate. These are, this is sort of a rare, whimsical uh, pattern, and um, uh, quite unusual. And uh, good colors, strong colors, and then lot, the good use of negative space all the way around it. Beautifully done. Uh, there's a nice detail of it. You notice the gilding is all uh, still very much intact. The little, the shading and so forth looks very, very good. Good use of uh, the application of how they did skin tones and all that, all very fine. This sold for $5,000, uh, more than four times its high estimate. Uh, so some folks really wanted that. And then the uh, Arms of Izod plate, which I think this was one of the bargains of the day. Uh, beautifully done Famille Rose uh, plate, very much in the color palette of imperial porcelains of, of, of the Yongchen period, that very, very lovely um, uh, soft, uh, very soft translucent pinks that you see on some very, very rare bowls that were done for the, for the Chinese market. Um, here they've applied that, that same quality to the rim of this plate. And then this uh, uh, beautiful looking setter um, with, with, with the lion's masks on it. This only went for 1800 It actually sold for within its estimate. So good on whoever got that. That was a good thing. And it wouldn't have surprised me if that had brought, you know, 3500 or so. So you never know. And uh, the other thing that sold, I just wanted to remind everybody, bring this back just because we had talked about it. I, I, we talk a little bit about furniture and so on. was this very, very nice Irish Chippendale mahogany tea table with that beautiful carving, uh, of sh uh, beautiful carved shelf front. Uh, this was a wonderful table. Really, really handsome, elegant table. Uh, looked great with por Chinese porcelain on it. And uh, ended up selling, I think, very reasonably, $3,250. Uh, with the buyer's premium, of course, it's up closer to around 4000 but this was a really, really, really pretty table. Very pretty, very well proportioned, nice legs, nice carving, and a good color, nice old color on it. like that a lot. Beautiful. And uh, Irish furniture is always a little bit more gutsy than, than, than typical, some, some typical more, more staid English furniture. So, uh, uh, Irish furniture can be a little bit bold. So it's, it's great stuff. And then over to this, uh, this was something, this was Coronari. Yeah, the Coronari sale is uh, uh, finished yesterday. I think there's another part going on today. Uh, but there was this, this very nice pair of Femi Ver, um, uh, the, the, the Femi Ver or Wukai, I think Wukai would be more appropriate, a pair of Kangxi bowls. They were, they were, they were over six inches in, in diameter each. They were in nice condition. It was a pair, and somebody picked them up for 750 euros. I think it was very reasonable. They were they were nice looking, and I looked them over, and they didn't seem to have any damage. They were in good condition, and absolutely Kung Shi period. They had very pretty, pretty uh, turquoise on them. I love that color. Love that color, and uh, the decorations were nice. A little bit of fritting, of course, around the rim. A lot of Kung Shi pieces, but that was a nice pair of bowls to collect. Nice looking pair. And the other little bargain of the day, this was also Carnari, right, was this, uh, this bronze uh, brush pot. Ming Dynasty, um, very nicely done, reticulated walls, good looking, had rue head feet on it. All this activity, nice uh, sort of gooey warm patina, this very nice untouched patina, but f nicely cast. Genuine, beautiful table object for a scholar's table uh, if you're a brush pot collector. And somebody picked this up for $1,420, well, well under the estimated range. Uh, uh, a, a nice thing. Uh, so a couple of you have mentioned that Carinari has a lot of fees, and uh, they, they have this odd thing. They have a fee for processing and a fee for this. Uh, I, I don't know why they do that. But at any rate, when, when auction houses have, have fees and commissions and stuff, it's not that big a deal. You do, you're paying the same price competitively at bid and ultimate price as anybody else. So you just bid accordingly um, if they if they tack on a big buyer's premium because everybody's going to calculate the same thing. So if you, if you want to limit how much you spend, calculate ahead uh, how much you want to spend and then go with that. Um, uh, uh, there's, there's, there's nothing you can do about how some auction houses process payments and, um, and, and how they charge sometimes extra handling fees uh, like this company does. Just, just, just pay less, that's all. And, um, and uh, you know, let the consigner complain about it, okay? Uh, now, what else is going on on here? Oh yeah, over on, uh, on eBay, like I said, last week was sort of a quiet week. 
There were some nice things, though. One of them was this uh, very nice um, uh, uh, Chinese silk that was from a, a, a seller in Pakistan. Had a few little condition issues here and there, but very complicated, very, very um, uh, heavily woven. Um, lot, lots, a lot, a profusion of, of weaving on this thing. Absolutely fascinating. I liked this a lot. I thought this was a really, really good thing. And I, I think that somebody got a good buy on it. Uh, it went for eleven $1 hundred and ninety dollars. I don't know if it's because it's coming from you know so far away in Pakistan or, or what it was, but um, uh, uh, or maybe it was the way he photographed it against a, a busy a busy textile photograph against busy wallpaper is never a good idea. Uh, you, you know, you show it flat with a neutral background so your eye can focus on the artwork. But whatever it was, it's, it brought only eleven $1 hundred and ninety dollars, which I think was a pretty good buy. And um, uh, the, the shipping was uh, about 30 pounds um, uh, from there to here, according to this. So that's very reasonable, very reasonable shipping. Um, uh, and, then, and then on to this was the tortoise shell. This was all on the newsletter page, as always. Uh, was this very nice tortoise shell that you can't sell on eBay. <laughs> uh, uh, b beautifully done with gilding on it. And this is a rather unusual one. If you're looking at it and you're thinking, boy, that's a rare bird, it is rare. Uh, typically, they didn't apply a lot of gilding to, to these fans, but this one they did, and it was I think it was quite successful. Here it is folded up, the blades are all in nice condition, I don't see any chips to the edges, all very nicely done, nice detail all the way around, tiny little, tiny little nick out of it there, that's it. All right, now the threads are missing. You notice it needs to be restrung. This is a common problem with these old fans was that the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the threads that link them all together, gets, it gets, it, they, they just they wear out and they, and they fall apart. And uh, there, are, there are people who can, can re-thread a fan for you. But this, was, this was a nice one, all right? And uh, in the end, it did quite well. It ended up selling for $1,073, but I don't think that was all the money. This was from a seller up in Ontario, Canada. Um, I, I don't think that was all the money, but the, the only issue with it is, 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 is getting it, if somebody in the U.S. bought this, getting it across the border, uh, because it is tortoise shell, and the Endangered Species Act is the issue, and, uh, you know, be careful. All right, now... Over here to this, the uh, China Trade Tea Caddy, the lobed China Trade Tea Caddy with this nice little original wooden feet. Uh, these don't turn up all that often. And as I mentioned last week, it looked like somebody maybe pried it open at one point. Maybe they lost the key. They had to get into it that way. Uh, and, and, and as you know, the, the tea was a very expensive commodity. And it was back in the day, it was kept in locked, little locked cases so the, so the servants wouldn't steal the stuff. And um, this one had a little bit of chipping here and there. but. Beautiful little caddy, ended up selling for $578. I think mostly because it's a rare form. These lobed forms are a bit unusual. The square ones, the ones that you see all the time, are a bit more common. Uh, this was a bit of an unusual one, and there are people out there who collect tea caddies very specifically, not just Chinese ones. They'll collect English tea caddies, French tea caddies, Irish, Scottish tea, ca tea caddies from around the world. And uh, But this was a nice Chinese one, nice example. And uh, the other thing I mentioned, I wanted to mention, was this: this nice little koro uh, ikimoni of uh, uh, Kirin or Kilin, uh, Japanese, nicely cast, nice patina, um, very animated looking. I like that. I like the head. I like the way the body's animated, the musculature of the body, and all that. Really nice little example, and uh, ended up doing pretty well. Um, it uh, sold for seven hundred and ten dollars. It went over its uh, 710 euros, rather. It went over its high estimate of 650, but I thought it was a nice one, and apparently so did other people, which is always good. And then on to this, this sort of heavily barb-rimmed uh, early Chin Lung Famille Rose dish. Uh, this caught my eye because the, the the barbed rim on it is is very pronounced, very strong. Often these are much more subtle, much lower barbs on them. This one is very strongly done, and the decoration is very strong, and it makes it sort of an interesting example, I think. Uh, and uh, in the end, it did pretty well, but it wasn't a crazy price. It ended up selling for 124 124 euros, not bad. But, uh, it was estimated two to 250 euros. Like I said, always leave a bid. I've said that for years, and it's true. Leave a bid if you're not sure. Even though you think, ah, it's a waste of time. 
Um, nobody knows you left a low bid, you know. It's not like you're embarrassed. Nobody knows that you left a cheapskate bid. I do it all the time. I leave, I leave silly bids. Uh, so I'm just some there, and I go, yeah, what the heck? If I get it for that, I'll take it. And uh, uh, over the last few years, I've bought some remarkable things that way. Um, someday I'll, I'll bring in a few of them, and we'll, we'll talk about them. Um, um, but I don't want to upset anyone. I bought, I bought one of them on eBay not long ago. And uh, it was an absolutely incredible thing. And it was, it, was a, it was a buy it now that came up on a, on a Sunday. And I just happened to be looking in that category uh, like a minute after it came up. And uh, it was a, an extremely rare um, uh, piece of bamboo, unbelievably rare. At any rate, uh, it, was a nice, it was exciting to buy. It was fun. And I'm, I'm going to keep it. It's not for sale. All right, now, uh, what else is going on? Oh, upcoming rugs and carpets and textiles and, and all that good stuff. Um, Austrian Rug Company has two sales coming up. They're on live auctioneers and invaluable. They have some, they, they, these guys put together some nice sales. They, have some, they get some nice carpets. They're not enormous sales, usually a couple of hundred lots, and they do one one day and one sale the next day. And this time around, um, and, and, they, and they focus heavily on, cent, on Asian, Central Asian, Tibetan, uh, Chinese, Ningxai rugs, also Caucasian rugs and other rugs, but um, some really nice textiles. And I, I always say, you know, you know p p buy some nice rugs for your house. Always, always you know, a, a, a room with a beautiful carpet really, really makes a difference. There was, a, years ago, there was a dealer, um, I think it was Doris Blau in New York, I, I think it was Doris Blau, one of, the, one of the really great dealers, and she said, uh, you know, the, the, the carpet is the soul to the room. It all starts on the floor and comes up. And uh, uh, beautiful carpets and textiles in a room absolutely make a room and, and make a hallway, make a space uh, because, because the, the, there's just something about them, I think. And this sale has some nice ones. It's got some good Tibetan chair covers. It's got some good column rugs that, that you can get. It's got this very rare Tibetan um, uh, block print horse cover here with the crosses on it. Um, we actually have one of these uh, uh, we've had for years and years and years. My wife picked it up when she was in Asia, and uh, a beautiful. She got it from a from a from a from a, um, a monk, and uh, this is a, a beautiful example too. Estimated twelve hundred to eighteen hundred euros with an opening bid of seven hundred and ten. But other other things included in this sale are these. <clears throat> There's several Kemsa Central Persian rugs, and Kemsa rugs are wonderful carpets. If you've never had one. Uh, uh, the Persian uh, 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 Kemsa Shiraz rugs, as they're generically known, but uh, there's several in this sale, and uh, they ha they're known for having extremely soft wool. There was a dealer and a friend of mine up here in the Boston area named John Collins, who specialized in these rugs. He wrote books on them, rugs for the Fires area, and uh, bee jars, bee jar carpets. He was Mr. Bee Jar. He, unfortunately, John passed on, but. Uh, he, he, he wrote books about these, and the coloration of these rugs are absolutely fabulous. The, all the animals, all the little zoomorphic uh, uh, creatures running around it, and then these very lovely multiple borders, beautiful dyes, checkerboard ends, and all that. And this is a good sized rug. This is like a 4 by 5 by how big is this? 4.4 uh, by almost 8 feet, 7 feet. Uh, they say it was made around 1900. I think it's actually older than that, judging by the colors. But the estimate is very modest, six to nine hundred euros. All right, and I've checked before with these guys over there shipping from uh, from Austria to here uh, rugs. If they could roll them up into this size, it's you know 120, 150 bucks or something. It's very reasonable. And he's got several of these um, central, uh, several of these Persian rugs. This one, and then there's this one with a red background, also Kemsa, seven hundred to a thousand dollars. Beautiful, rich red background here. Uh, lovely colors, lovely colors. This is also about the same size as the other one. Uh, 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 absolutely great, beautiful carpet. And um, if you're looking for a nice rug to put um, in, in a spot in your house where it'll, 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 the sunlight will hit it, uh, that's, these are pretty good. And then there's also things like this, the Tibetan sit sitting mat, sitting rug. Uh, this is a tiger pattern uh, with this very nice soft pink on it uh, in here. Uh, beautifully done, uh, you know, circa 1900, 
and uh, and then there's also an Igder uh, Chuval, which is connected to the Yomud tribes, vibrant, strong color, uh, 1,500 to 2,000. Now, he tends not to have big reserves. So if this is estimated at 1,500 to 2,000 euros, the reserve is probably around $600, 600, 600 euros. The reserve seems to be, from what I've seen of him in the past, more than half the, the low estimate in most cases. So check out Austrian rug if you're looking for a nice carpet. And then, uh, and, they're, and they're all antique, they're all nice. They're all, they, they know what they're doing. And, uh, and then there was, this was on, uh, this is coming up on eBay. Did this finish or is this still coming up? This is, this is on there right now, it'll be in the newsletter this week. Is this very, very nice dragon uh, 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 seat cover. Um, he called it a robe, I don't think it is, I think it's a throne cover. But at any rate, uh, nicely done, uh, very good looking dragons on it. Might need a, might need a, it looks like it might, might could use it with a cleaning. No, it just got washed out by the flash. The dark blue up here looks fine. Nice soft colors, nice soft salmon color here and here. Like the bats on it. And uh, it's only up to three hundred and eighty dollars. It ought it ought to bring you know eight hundred to a thousand. So if you get it for less than that, good on you. Uh, but it's a good looking it's a good looking um, uh, uh, mat. And also this this is a, a very nice piece of eighteenth century cloisonne that'll be on the newsletter this week. It's on eBay. Uh, good looking example. The back of it looks nice. Nice small dish, but very pretty. Very pretty uh, colors. And it's got this beautiful lattice in the background. Uh, it looks like you could probably use a slight cleaning, but be careful when you clean cloisonne. You don't want to damage it. Uh, you know, but a little soap and water, and that's all you want to use. And uh, it's only up to $125. It's got five days to go. This is Rufe's is selling this from uh, over in the UK. But it's a nice little dish. Good looking little dish. If you're a cloisonne buyer, you want to check that out. All right. And also this Ming a cricket stick or candlestick holder uh, of, 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 of a gentleman with, a, with, with, the, with, the, with the lotus uh, form candle holder on top of his head. Uh, rather nifty. I like this. It's kind of dirty. Um, uh, like I said, you know, you know gentle uh, cleanup with just water, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of uh, soap. But be careful when you clean bronzes. You don't want to clean off the patina. Um, I would start with just plain warm water. Get, just get the dirt out of the cracks. Use a paintbrush to get it out, a soft paintbrush. And uh, it's up to $810, had a couple of bids so far. I think in the end it'll probably do a bit better than that, probably another four or 500. It's good size, this was a decent size. It wasn't like three inches, I think it was like, it was six, six and a quarter inches. It was, it was a little, it was a nice little size, good size, but it wasn't tiny. And uh, the last thing on here is this, um, this, this was that Chinese rug I threw this on the end there because I knew it was going to close before I finished. <laughs> it just finished. Uh, this was that very, very nice um, Chinese Ningxia mat that was um, uh, being sold. This was down at uh, Andrew Jones out in California. Ended up selling for $1,400 with a three to $500 estimate. Uh, it had it, and there were two or three other rugs with it. Um, it was this and this, this peculiar um, the, the mat that's not worth anything. But, the, but the, 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 this pair, these two, are, are very nicely done. Good color, well drawn, and uh, the price isn't bad. And I, I was, when I first saw it, I mentioned it a few weeks ago, so I thought, ah, maybe somebody got a great buy in their hands. Well, somebody paid 1400 bucks for it. So that's the way it goes. All right. Uh, that's about it for the week. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, let's see, what are we doing next week? Oh, it's a bunch of stuff. We're always doing something. But at any rate, uh, I hope you had a great uh, Labor Day weekend. We did. Um, we had my uh, grandkids were staying with us. We had a cookout. And uh, uh, the weather was very, very nice finally. We got some terrific weather. And uh, everything, everything is hunky-dory here. Now we're dealing with a bumper crop of tomatoes. Uh, in our yard. If any of you live near me, come over and get yourself a free bushel of tomatoes. Okay. <laughs> the yard is flooded with that and basil and sage this year. We have our sage bushes completely out of control, but I think it's because of all the rain. Anyway, yeah, there it goes. Uh, it's, it's fine though. We'll, we'll cook it and eat it and give it the rest away to our neighbors. Uh, have a terrific weekend and we'll see you all next week. And uh, like I said at the beginning, the, uh, the uh, browser uh, glitch on uh, uh, Firefox on the Bitamount Live site is all set um, from what I can see. And um, 
Uh, if there's anything else, uh, always as always, let me know. And uh, thank you, thank all of you who've been buying on there lately. There's been quite a few sales. Uh, uh, um, so if you're selling on there, put some more stuff up. All right. See you all next week. Bye bye. Thank you.